I buy a lot of rum. In fact, I buy it faster than I drink it, which makes me a collector and not an alcoholic. But yeah, I've chugged enough Kool-Aid that I'm to the point where I'll buy a bottle of rum not based on the brand or age, but on nonsense words on the label that mean nothing to the vast majority of drinkers. I could tell you some of these words, but that would mean exposing the dark underbelly of rum collectors. But I'll give you a couple for free. Clarendon and Wedderburn. I'll get to Wedderburn later, but Clarendon is a distillery and they represent the modern side of rum production in Jamaica. If Hampton is the funky old school way of making rum, Clarendon is a modern equivalent. Imagine a small oil refinery that makes rum on a mass scale. They make Captain Morgan for the European market, they make Myers, they also make Money Musk, which is terrific. Because of the variety of stills at their facility, they can make light calm still rum and also heavy high ester pot still rum. Which brings me to these two bottles. I'm sad to admit that the only reason I got them is because they're both from Clarendon and they're both cask strength. But I was curious to see how different two rums from the same distillery could taste because they did have different paths. For example, aging. This one's 13 years old and was aged entirely in Jamaica, and this one is 10 years old and has three years tropical aging and seven years continental aging, meaning somewhere in Europe. Also, neither of these came from this distillery. They're products from independent bottlers, and if that's something you're unfamiliar with and would like to know more about it, you can check out a video explaining it here. First up is the Impex Collection. Distilled at Clarendon and aged at least 13 years in an oak cask. Tropical age, light pot still, 51.4% ABV. Explosion of fresh cherry, and also those Luxardo cherries too. A little bit of chocolate, oak. So you do get those chocolate cherry notes right up front, but that immediately gives way to those vegetal notes that I associate with Rum Agricole. If you're unfamiliar with Rum Agricole, some of them taste like pool toy. Not that I go around licking pool toys. Yeah, this is really nice. I do need to put some water in it though. Excuse me for a second. Yeah, a lot less heat, a lot more fragrant. A little bit of water kind of amplifies the rum agricole notes, honestly. And while we're on it, this is probably the least Jamaican rummy tasting Jamaican rum I've ever had. Everything I've tasted from Appleton all the way up to Premium Hamptons has that funky quality. I mean, even Myers and Karuba have a little bit of it. This does not. It does taste great though. Yeah, after sitting for a while in the glass, the most prominent things I could say about it are the heat and the agricole notes. And I'll definitely be making a daiquiri with this at some point. So on to the next bottle. This is Holmes Case Single Cask. 10 years old, cask strength, no additives, 59% ABV. Also, the Impex didn't have additives either. I'm not categorically opposed to rum having additives, but I'd prefer they didn't. And there's that second esoteric word, Wetterburn. If you drink a lot of rum, you probably recognize it from the Smith & Cross bottle. But Wedderburn was a guy, an Englishman in the 17th century. He was a landowner in Jamaica and as far as I know, a rum importer as well. His name has come to be associated with certain ester levels, but historically it referred to a particular style of rum. And because it's on a bottle of Smith & Cross, I can't help but expect something similar. Let's find out. Baking spice, cedar cherries, a little bit of light funkiness, something akin to an Appleton. On the nose, I would say this is slightly more pleasant than the Impex, not that the Impex is unpleasant. I'm thinking this is the wrong glass to try these. Glencairns were designed to focus the nose, and if you're drinking really hot overproof spirit like both of these, all you really get is the burn. But what's done is done, I'm not going to get up and dirty another glass. Don't panic, it just went down the wrong tube. It is really hot though, and I do love drinking overproof rum neat. This is a bit much, but the flavor on this one is really dense and concentrated. The Impex didn't indicate what kind of barrel it was aged in. I don't know how much of the flavor of this is because of the bourbon barrel, but I definitely think this one will benefit from a few drops of water. Yeah, the nose opens way up. I almost get a little bit of marshmallow in there. Very slight funkiness. Even though this is, according to the label, in the same style as Smith & Cross, it doesn't really taste anything like it. In Smith & Cross, I get loads of overripe banana and blueberry. This tastes very much like custard. And the agricole notes in the Impex are nowhere to be found here. There are a little bit of those funk notes, but they're definitely taking a backseat to the dessert flavors. Yeah, this is spectacular. 
It would make a great daiquiri, it would make an even better old fashioned, but honestly, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get past just sipping it neat. No need to pick favorites, but at three years younger and 8.6% ABV higher, I prefer this one. Now, if you wanna taste these for yourself, the Impex might be a hard find. Your best bet would probably be a Woke Rum Bar if there are any near you. But as of this shooting, the Holmes K is still available. In fact, I know another person who has one. Yo, Pete. Ah, what's up, buddy? I remember you saying you have a bottle of the Holmes K Clarendon. Would you mind pouring yourself a little bit and letting the good people watching at home know what you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that right here. Actually, I think I might put a little water in this. I can't believe that's showing me up in my own video. 59% I think needs a little bit of water. Uh, you get a lot of uh, a lot of those tropical notes that you're expecting, sort of light banana, but also like a bready quality, sort of a banana bread or a, I don't know, banana cake maybe. You get a lot of um, sort of powdered sugar notes. Oh man, it's powerful. A little bit of like a, gosh, like a berry flavor. Or uh, another kind of fruit, like uh, you get some of those banana notes, but also like um, other fruits, like um, not cherry, but like a like a plum or a berry, like a raspberry. Not a raspberry, like a blackberry, maybe. Ooh. Man, it is it is hot too. It is very strong. Definitely needs water. I should probably let it sit out a little while too. Hmm. Get a little bit of a chocolate note when you smell it after with some water. Yeah, not super funky, not like um, not like a high funk uh, component, but um, definitely some fruit notes. But more of those darker fruits, plums or uh, apricot. I want to say some kind of berry, but I'm not sure. But I do get a little bit of that banana um, with like a sort of. Uh, a sort of green quality, sort of like a like a banana chip, or like a like a banana bread, or like a like a buttery biscuit, something like that. Uh, oof, it is very powerful, uh, not for the faint of heart. So I would definitely let it sit, give it a little water. Um, but yeah, a big a big rum. Hey, I hope that helps. Um, back to you. Thanks, man. And there you have it. Two great rums and a whole lot of jibber jabber. If you liked it at like, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and if there's something you think I should try, let me know in the comments. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Turn camera.